Welcome to Life Devotions. Thank you for joining me today. Be a good example is the title of this devotion. David, even though we know about some of his painful failings and falling, he was always able to recover. He was always able to be restored by the Lord because he turned his heart to him in humility and sought his mercy and found his grace to help him. And that same mercy is what God is also giving to you and me through the Lord Jesus Christ, that we may find his grace to help in time of need, as it says in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 18, I think it is, or 16 through 18. And here in 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 9, David is encouraging his young 25-year-old son, Solomon. And he says to him, <clears throat> As for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father. You see, Solomon had seen God in his love, in his father, in his mother. Their lives were an example of mercy. Their lives were not an example of self-achievement and self, you know, uh, excellence or whatever, even though the, David was phenomenal. But no, David's life was a sign of God's love and God's mercy and God's grace, and he had been brought up with that. And he said, son, follow the, the, the God of your father and serve him with a loyal heart and a willing mind. <clears throat> For the Lord searches the heart and he understands all the intents of the thoughts. And if you seek him, he will be found by you. You know, if you think about it, <clears throat> excuse me, for you that are fathers, for you that are mothers, what is it that you would find the most important thing you could do for your children or your grandchildren if you're like Virginia and I? We're, grand we're grandparents now. What do you think is the most important thing is that they can see you loving God, serving God, following God? Not just you telling them to do it. No, they are seeing you doing it. We don't want to just tell others to do it. You want them to see it in us. I find this most important. I want to be able to look my children in the eyes and say, you've seen how mom and I have followed the Lord. Follow us as we follow God. And man, we are examples <clears throat> before we are anything else. And David goes on to say to everybody, in front of everybody, in chapter 29, verse 1, Further, furthermore, King David said to all the assembly, My son Solomon, whom alone God has chosen, is young and inexperienced. And, his, and the work is great because the temple is not for man but for the Lord God. You see, David did not say that with a disdaining, belittling, spirit of irritation with the youth of his son. No, not at all. He was saying, look, I know he's young and I know he's inexperienced, but God's chosen him. Let's trust God. And when Solomon was standing there hearing this, there's only two reactions possible here. Well, I'll show my dad how young and inexperienced I am. I'll do it better than him. That actually is what his son said. But not Solomon. Solomon hadn't been raised on pride and self-exaltation. Solomon had been raised on humility and mercy. Humility and grace, not on pride and self-exaltation. And that humility and grace is what enabled him to set his heart to seek the Lord like his father had said to him, seek the Lord and he shall be found by you. Because it says here, so Solomon went up in 2 Chronicles 1 verse 6. He went up to the altar before the Lord and he offered a thousand burnt offerings on it. And that night God appeared to Solomon and said to him, ask 
What shall I give you? And Solomon said to God, you have shown great mercy to David, my father, and have made me king in his place. Now, O Lord God, let your promise to David, my father, be established for you have made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Now give me wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before the people. In other words, that I may be a good example for who can judge this great people of yours. Then God said to Solomon, because this was in your heart and you've not asked for riches or wealth or honor or the life of your enemies, nor have you asked for long life, but you have asked for wisdom and knowledge for yourself that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are granted to you and I will give you riches, wealth and honor such as none as the kings had who were before you, nor shall after you be the like. You see what David implanted? David was a good example despite some of the mistakes he made. Your mistakes do not have to be your identity. They do not have to be what identifies you as a person, the opposite. The opposite is so, your humility, your deep, Surrender to God's mercy and grace can be the example. And if people ask you, how is it that you have it? You said, oh, God was so merciful to me when I didn't deserve it. God was so gracious to me when I should have had judgment, but God's mercies have followed me and His goodness all the days of my life. You see, David was an example of mercy and of grace. That's what I believe is being a good example. Sadly, Solomon, through a large part of his life there, forgot about that and forsook the example of his father and became an example of self-indulgence and, 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 and not a good example. And he put that in his son. And you could see it in his son Rehoboam who became king after him that he says, my father was like this, but I'm gonna be like that. I'm gonna be better than my father. And he split the whole kingdom to pieces. And even though the hand of the Lord was in all of that, I don't believe that's the example that God is looking for in you and me. He's looking for in you and me that we have the heart that we see in David, which was a heart after God. And so I intercede with you that the Lord work in you this sweet heart of humility, which brings me to the thought of what our Lord Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. <laughs> that means blessed are those who do not see any, any self-exaltation in themselves, who do not see any greatness, so to speak, in themselves. And I'm not talking about insecurity here. I'm just talking about that you don't boast in yourself. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In the Amplified, it helps us understand a little bit better what that means. Blessed, happy to be envied, spiritually prosperous and so forth. He says, are the poor in spirit, the humble, who rate themselves insignificant, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven actually to get to that place of humility, you really need Jesus because without it, self-exaltation is in the heart of every man. When I was a young teenager and struggled with my angers and irritations with others, my father once looked at me with his green eyes and he said, son, don't forget to humble yourself for it is within every man's heart to exalt self. And that statement stuck with me. He didn't say it in a rebuke. He said it in an impartation of that spirit by which he lived. And I find to daily sweetly lay down my life to serve the best way to remember to humble myself because it's, we forget about it. And before you know it, we're irritated with this and we're having a bad attitude about that and we're a bit harsh and unkind about this. And it's all self, self, self. And we don't realize it. We don't realize it. Blessed are those who mourn when they have a bad attitude that you go, Lord, I, I, 
that was not right. He says, because for them, he says, they shall be comforted where you begin to receive that sweet, humble nature of Jesus. And then you begin to become meek. He said, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. The meek means that you are gentle of heart, kind and gracious and humble of heart because you've mourned. And then he says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled or satisfied. That's what it means. Oh, hallelujah. When you feel happy and satisfied, then you become merciful to others and you obtain mercy. You become pure of heart to see God. You become a peacemaker and are called sons and daughters of God because you love to live holy. And then he says, blessed are you when people are upset with you because you're living righteous with me instead of because you're having bad attitudes. And he says, blessed are you when they revile you because you keep such a good heart. And he says, rejoice exceedingly because your reward in heaven is great. Now this, what I'm teaching you, he says, is what it means to be the salt of the earth and to be the light of the world. This is what it means to be a good example. So I want to encourage you, meditate here on Matthew chapter 5. Meditate on that whole chapter 5 and chapter 6, and then Luke chapter 6. Meditate on those two chapters and let the Lord work that grace in you to become a good example unto others. Amen. Have a good day.